Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to the Feral North devlog. If you're not familiar, Feral North is an adventure game where you play as a border collie on a journey to restore color to the world with your human. The last month has been crazy. Steam Next Best went really, really well with thousands of players playing the demo and leaving hundreds of lines of feedback. We actually doubled the wishes on the game and are now the 16th most wishes to game on Steam, which is just amazing. <clears throat> Sorry, 816th most wishes to game on Steam. Well, with tens of thousands of upcoming games, I guess that's pretty good, but uh, there's still some work to do to catch up with Carlson. I'm coming for you, Milkman. The reception was super positive, with some common points of constructive criticism, and I'm not fixing any of it. At least not yet. You see, I feel like I've lived on this island for the last year, spending so much time trying to refine the game, figure out what the game even is, polishing it up to a high standard for devlogs in the demo, and honestly, I feel like I could spend another year just on this one island, refining every little detail. But there's so much of the game left to build. You see, I plan to have six main islands, and currently there's one. So at this rate, we're looking at a release date of 2027. So here's what's next. Top priority, I really want to get a rough draft of all the main islands. They won't be perfectly polished, but the idea is to be able to play the whole game from start to finish. From here, I can have John start working on the score as I go back and do a second pass at each island, polishing things up, and then a third pass, and a fourth, and a fifth, and a sixth. Next, once the game is playable end to end, I can also spend time adding all the little optional extras like more mini islands, similar to the duck island from the demo, and other little interactions that really help bring a game to the next level. Think of things like wildlife, props, vegetation, all that fun stuff. So the idea is to spend one month per island doing the first draft, meaning I have five months to draft all the remaining islands. I started on this a few weeks ago, so let's take a look at how that's going so far. So I really want each island to have its own unique feel, and since color is such a big part of the game, logically, each island should have its own color scheme. Oh, by the way, ignore the floating grass and all this footage of draft islands. I generate all the grass randomly as I work on level design, and I do a final manual pass once the design is complete, so you're going to see a whole lot of floating grass here, just ignore that for now. Okay, back to what's new. Everything up to here is had a summary vibe, but as you progress through the islands, that's going to change for story purposes. So for the second island, I'm going for more of an autumn feel with lots of reds and oranges, falling leaves, all that sort of thing. In the uncolored world, I'm going for a purple hue compared to the bluish grey of the first island. I previously showed an early version of the weather system, and I've really cranked that up a notch this month. I have thunder and lightning cracking around you, and I've started developing a global wind system to kind of further add to the mood of the island. I need to figure out some higher quality thunder sound effects, but you get the idea here. For the environment, I also decided to introduce some castle ruins to the island, because you know, it's set in Scotland, and I found this blender add-on that's a complete lifesaver. Basically, I can pretty quickly model the lowest level LOD model, click a button, tweak a few params, and it'll procedurally generate all the little details of wear and tear for the higher LOD models. This isn't sponsored, I don't even know the creator, but for 15 bucks this add-on has saved me dozens of hours of work, so if you're a Blender user, check it out, I'll leave a link below. This island is where the sheep herding I showed way back in a previous devlog actually takes place. I've been working on a lot of little improvements to the herding, but this is one of the features that will definitely need more work in future passes. One of the main changes is how the human behaves during herding. Previously she had to stand still near the destination, and so she could only guide you there with her whistles, and with that I needed a lot of little cutscenes to hide teleporting around the level, and it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Now she can stick with the flock, following them as you guide them along, and act more as a shepherd. This keeps her more front and center, makes way more sense, and prevents the need for those excessive cutscenes to hide her movement. Speaking of your human, one of my favorite new elements is bicycling. I'm not really going to tell you how this comes about in-game, but I had this idea for a sequence that involved a bicycle, and here we are. So to be clear, this won't be player controlled, you'll just be running alongside her, but it's a really fun feature to develop, and I love the way it's coming together in the level, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. After modeling the bicycle, I really wanted to hire someone to do the animations, after the whole canoe animation fiasco, you know? But I figured even if I do hire someone, I'll still need to do a whole bunch of work with inverse kinematics to get her hands and feet properly in contact with the bike. So I went ahead and did that, and when I finished I realized that that's actually basically all the animation. 
Okay, maybe not right away. It did take a while to get her and the bicycle to handle all the different types of terrain that I needed, but I'm really happy with where it's at now. Basically, I use inverse kinematics to fix her hands to the handlebars and her feet to the pedals, and then if I animate the pedals and the wheels with the movement of the bicycle, then her feet and the legs basically do 90% of the animation work. On top of that, I wrote a bit of logic to keep the bicycle and torso rotation in line with the terrain, and it handles any realistic terrain scenario pretty well now. Similarly, if I just use a single IK to fix one of her hands to the handlebars, then she can walk the bike. I do still need animations for getting on and off the bike, and some added movement when turning and motion in her torso would go a long way. But I'm pretty happy with this result for literally zero keyframing. Anytime I can avoid doing keyframe animations is definitely a win in my book. Nice. Finally, I'll leave you with a little tease of the third island. I want this one to feel claustrophobic, and part of the story here involves memories of being back in the city, so the uncolored world has these dark buildings that dissolve in and tower above you as you move through the island, and I love this effect, I think it feels really unsettling, like you're being watched, which is great because this island is where the hand monster finally finds its home in the actual game and out of the test level, but more on that next time. Alright, that'll be it for this one, I'm off to continue working away on the first draft of the third island. Don't forget to wishlist Feral North on Steam, that's always a great way to support your favorite game creators, and I will see you in the next one.